Hi there, it's your favourite Yorkshire demo here, Suzanne. Coming to you on what is my first live of this year. I know, shocking isn't it? 5th of February and I'm on the, the first live of the year. Unfortunately, a few technological issues have got in the way. So these projects that, well, the one I'm doing this evening, it's been sat waiting in the wings for a few weeks to be shown. So, fingers crossed, tonight will go well and you'll all enjoy what I make. And then, as long as technology holds out for me, we'll be, we'll be all good. So I can see some people have joined. Please say hi. Let me know that you're there and that you can see me and hear me. Um, make sure that those gremlins aren't creeping in. Um, and I'll then show you what we're making this evening. So, whilst we wait for a few more to join us, have you been ordering from the current celebration catalogue? Remember, it ends in 23 days exactly. So, haven't got long to benefit from those freebies. In fact, I'll just show you very quickly. Um, have I got one next to me? No, but I have got the mini. So today's project is from the mini catalogue. Um, we're going to be using... Uh, can I remember which page it's on? Let's have a look. So we're going to be using the Golden Garden Designer Acetate, which is here. So it's part of the Fine Art Floral Suite. Um, and if you look just up here, so item number two, can I show you there? Item number two is the Golden Garden Designer Speciality Acetate. That's what we're going to be using this evening. Um, so we'll we'll crack right on. Um, I think as well, the stamps that I'm using, I think that is from the mini. Where is my mini? There we go. So then in the celebration catalogue itself, on page six, we're going to be using this stamp set here. Uh, so this is called Approaching Perfection. Hello ladies, good evening. I hope you're okay. So they're the two things we're going to be using this evening. I'm going to quickly show you the project. So um, I'm going to try and hold this the best because... I did say yesterday to a friend of mine that filming acetate under a ring light because of it being evening is probably not the best idea. Funnily enough, my next three live projects are all acetate based, so I'll get perfecting the angling so that I don't blind you all with the glare. So this is tonight's. As you can see, there's the, the stamp set there. We've embossed that in gold. We're using the small metallic pearls and then because this side of the acetate is gold I've then gone with matching ribbon. Very vanilla's in the ribbon as well so we've gone with a very vanilla card and then if we lift up this corner it all slides out. So we're going to recreate this but in silver. So if I can pop the bow back on we are anyway. There we go, so the bar's back on. So, if I quickly show you the, the acetate, you'll see that there's the gold side. So this is a different pattern, there's three in the, in the pack. Look at this, try and get those angles right. So this is the, the gold side. Um, this one is a flower pattern that actually lines up with one of the sheets of paper that come in the fine art floral papers gold side and then if we flip it over we've then got a silver side so that's what we're using this evening you've seen the gold box this one will be creating a silver version of it so we've got our acetate this is five and a quarter by 12 inches and um, so the full um, length of it and then you can get two out of one of the sheets of acetate then we're going to be using basic black still. 
So this is 11 and a half by eight and a quarter. Um, and then I've got a couple of scraps. We've got a basic white, which is, um, this is two and a half by one and three quarters. And then another piece of black. And this is two by two and three quarter inches. Um, we are gonna do the stamping first, mainly because if I mess up, it's okay, we can go again. <laughs> but in short, I'm embossing and I've not embossed on camera ever and I'm probably being far too brave, but there we are. So I've got my sheet out ready to catch all the powder once we've done the, the main bit. We can't get these anymore, but if you look around, you can find their equivalents. This is called an embossing buddy and this just helps get any any of the rubbish off of your card before you emboss so that if there's any grease from your fingers and so on it gets it all off so that your embossing powder doesn't stick to places where you don't want it to stick. Versa marking, the only ink you need when you're embossing really. Um, and then we'll get our stamp. So. On that one, I used this one in the corner, which says if things really do get better with age, then you're approaching perfection. I think someone's after something when they send you a sentiment like that. <laughs> um, newsflash, birthdays fans be good for your health. Studies show that people who have more birthdays live the longest, which is a bit of a funny one. Your standard happy birthday, candles, balloon. One for if you're a bit forgetful. The bad news is I forgot your birthday. The good news is I forgot your age, which I'll take that one. Backhanded compliment, but I'll take it. Uh, so what if you're a year older? You're fabulous. I'm going to stick with this one. I like when there's a mixture of a couple of fonts and I like the the like handwriting type font for the word perfection here. So we're going to stick to that. That and I've measured my card specifically for that stamp. Um, so it's up here. So block wise, will that be big enough? It will, but I want a slightly bigger one so I can see for it properly. Yeah, so we'll use this. So what's this? This is a D block. And as I would normally, line up my stamp with grid paper. Line it the right way, shall we? So we can actually stick it. And pick that up. Right, I'm conscious that I've just touched that card again, so I'm just going to give it another swipe. Ink up our stamp with Versamark. Make sure we've got a good coating on it. Now, let's see. I'm going to move this down here so I can see a bit better. I'm going to try not to headbutt the tripod, which is literally there. And if I move another inch, I will knock it over. So... Winner. <laughs> Do you hear the concentration silence? <laughs> right, so I don't know how well you're seeing it on the card there. You might get a bit of reflection off of the off of the um ring light. I'll pop the Versa mark away before I go and get all stickied up. Um and I've got it's quite old this now, you'll tell by the by the um branding on it, it's not the black and white that we have now. Um, but as you can see, I've still got loads of this left. And at one point, this was my go-to, my go-to colour, silver and gold. So I'm just going to pop this on. And I've just realised I haven't plugged my embossing tool in, so I'm going to have to go do that. But you'll see why we have our little piece of paper underneath. Catches it all. And then I just give it a light tap on the back just to get the excess off. And that's ready. So we'll pop that to one side. And we'll pop this away. So not to waste it. I remember, um, must have been about two years ago now, Stampin' Up! did a promotional video where they did some embossing. And they didn't use a capture sheet underneath. They just 
poured and then they heat embossed without pouring the rest back into the tub and there is uproar with the demos that watched that video. Right, won't be a moment while I just quickly plug my tool in. So I've got my embossed tool and I will warn you now, if you have your sound up quite loud, turn me down because by the time I turn this on, it will be quite loud. <laughs> yeah, don't cough. No, definitely not. Can you imagine that? Silver powder absolutely everywhere. Right, I'm just going to warm this up. The good thing about this um, stamping up tool is I'm used to using an old one that I had just from a random craft store and it didn't heat up quick at all. I could have turned that on half an hour ago and it'd only just be warm. Whereas this is quite warm already. So I'm going to try and hold this at an angle. I'll try and hold it up here where you can hopefully see it change. I'm seeing that. Hopefully you're seeing that because I love watching it change. Oh, I also love when it doesn't burn my finger. Let's try that again. There we go. So if I bring that up, you should hopefully see under the light just how gorgeous that is. Right, so we'll pop that to one side and we can make the box itself now while I let that cool down. So, bring in the Simply Scored and we'll bring in our black cardstock. So just to repeat, this is 11 and a half by eight and a quarter. Um, and I've got to try and remember how I scored this. I first designed this must have been first week of January. So it's been sat on the side. Um, so fingers crossed for me. Keep them crossed. So on the long side, we want to score at four, five and a half, nine and a half, and 11. Then rotate this and then it's half an inch on each side. Oh no, so apologies, one and a half on each side. It's a good thing I reread that. <laughs> that could have almost gone wrong. There we go. So we'll pop this away. So the stamp set I showed you is from Celebration. Has anyone purchased it? Oh, say, say purchased it. Have you purchased anything that's allowed you to get it as a one of your free choices? Um, I always go straight for stamp sets and papers. Um, usually stamp sets more than paper because if I buy enough that I get repeat, you know, I can buy repeat items. Um, I don't mind having, of course, repeat papers. Um, so the stamp sets I always do first just in case I don't spend enough to get all of what I want. But this was one of the first ones that I jumped in at. It jumped in four. All right, so we've folded and burnished all those lines. And there isn't actually much cutting to do on this. Um, what I've done is I've made it so that you actually seal it shut. Um, so you can't open that afterwards until you give the recipient their item. And I've done that purposely just because of the slide nature of it. Otherwise it'd be a slide and then a flap and then all the tabs and um, I'm trying at the moment to simplify what I make because um, I want to go in line with the Simple Sunday series I've got. Ah, see, Alison, that's that's one of your um, advantages there, you know, multi-languages, which means that 
you can get one of each whereas I just end up with two English ones because well I can barely speak English let alone another language uh, Deb's who's online will vouch for me there right okay so with the thin sliver here this half inch section on the right hand side we're going to cut up each side of these squares to the first score line like so and then that releases the square we don't need this little skinny rectangle in this bottom corner at all so we're just going to get rid of that completely mitering it ever so slightly and then what we've just done we're going to turn around and do again so up the side of these squares and the same again here and then take the little tiny rectangle off again and then we're just going to wedge the squares so I always move the rectangles out of the way because I'm, I'm good at catching them. So one, two, and you only need a little bit off. It's just so that the box comes together a bit nicer. There we go. And the same on the other side. one and there we go get rid of them there we go so that's the template you should be left with I'm going to grab uh, my seal plus so I've need to give mine a bit of a wipe down I've got glued all over the place um, but then all we need to do is flip and go down this little tab that we've left on the right here I'm questioning now whether I needed to keep both sets of tabs yeah I did that's okay and fold over on itself and stick now what you could have done here is you could take off one of these top tabs here and you could give yourself an extra half an inch on the each end and then when you fold in your tabs you could bring down the top and flip in the half layer but instead I'm going to find my seam there we go at the back and bring them together like this so so we need a bit of an adhesive on this we're going to headbutt the camera so you all go on a little little bit of a ride there. Same on the other side. Sides in. Which one's the back? Back, back in. This is the point where you would fill it up with whatever you want to fill it up with. You could fit quite a lot in there. In fact, what's the final measurement on that? It's about five and a quarter by four by one and a half. So you, you can fit plenty in there. In fact, you could probably fit some former like note cards in here. Can't remember the full size of our note cards. When you've filled it up, you can then seal up the end. And that's the inner box itself. So now the adhesive, uh, the adhesive, the acetate. You can tell I haven't done a live for a little bit, can't you? I've got five of you here though. Not bad to say I've pretty much abandoned them because of technology. So as you can see, the acetate is exactly the width of the, of the box itself. I apologise for the glare you're going to get while I do this piece because angling it and bending the acetate at the same time it won't happen i don't have enough hands <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i know that i want this to end at the bottom of the box here like so so we're going to bend it round that first bend there we're not going to pinch too tightly because we want the box to be able to slide out but as you can see 
that's giving it a kink. I then use that kink as a guide. Where did I do it? I did it there. Use the kink as a guide and then we burnish the acetate. Now you do have to be quite firm. You need to tell acetate who's the boss. And there we go. So then you've got that first edge to work the rest out. And it just gives you something to, to butt the box against. So then you've got this lovely edge here. Look, I can't, can angle this bit now <laughs> and you won't get the glare of my ring light. So then, again the same, you don't want it too tight, so just fold it round, give it a couple of pinches, just to remember where it was, and then work it round and do, try and do the same again. Right, so we're going to burnish those. And then this one, which is there. So you will see the acetate is trying to fight with me. You've just got to tell it it was boss. So then you can pop your box back in there and you can finish the last one. So I'll follow it round. And then you've got just a bit of an overlap here. And I'm gonna tuck that under, give it another pinch. And again, a final burnish. Like so. And then this little strip that we've got left here, um, I'm going to pop some adhesive along it. And so, seal plus again, you can use tear and tape. Um, as tear and tape can be a bit stronger than seal. Although I haven't tested the theory yet of which is strongest. So just go with whichever one you are more comfortable with. And then off we go. So where's my back? There's the back. Let's pop that. I think I'll pop this at the bottom. At the bottom there and round it goes. And then just gently hold it in place, matching your lines up so you know you don't get a wonky front. Press that down. And there you go, it slides in and out nicely. And I've put my, match my seam back up again, shall we? So that the seams are on the same side. There we go. So the, the silver one's coming together there. So we'll pop our ribbon on. So what ribbon have I got this time? So this time I've got the silver metallic edge. So the silver has white through it with that lovely edge there. Um, whereas the gold had very vanilla through it. That's why we went with very vanilla card. Um, so we're going to pop this round in the same way and I've got to try and remember <laughs> how I tied that bow. How gorgeous is that? So I believe I started round about there and I went round the back and then I hooked it here around itself, I think. Don't quote me on this yet. That's because you see I've let go of it already. Debbie's going to be having a good little laugh wherever she's sat right now. Right, there we go. And then we go around the back again. And we bring it to meet it. Right, so I'm just going to cut a piece here long enough to finish it off. Probably too long, but at least then I've got some wiggle room. There we go. Right, so... And we pop this under here and see if I can do one of my um, upside down bows, shall we? No, we're not going to go upside down. 
See if I can tie one normally for a change. Right, let's straighten all this up. Oh, it is an upside down bow, look. That's okay. We can straighten this up now. So if we bring it to the top and then over to the side. There we go, no one would know. Apart from the four of you that are watching. There we are, so we'll trim this side off. Just pull that straight. There we go, we're getting there, look. <laughs> right, so we've got our piece that we already stamped. We need to pop this onto the black piece that we've already got cut. Which is here. I've made it so it's got a nice board around it. And there we go. Right, and then to finish the sentiment off. So these are what I've been using. So these are the metallic pearls. And as you can see, they are absolutely tiny. If I get my piercing tool, you'll see they're not that much bigger than the piercing tool, really. So these are the gold ones that I used on the first box. It also comes with a sheet of the silver ones. So I'm just going to pop three in the bottom corner, the same as I did on the gold one. So... and three and then did I pop this up? I did popped it up with dimensionals to finish it off so four dimensionals one in each corner get these backings off here she says <laughs> and we're going to pop this same as we did on the gold one in the bottom corner like so and there we are the gold and silver acetate boxes so these are using the approaching perfection stamp set and they're using the golden garden special design acetate um, from the Fine Art Floral Suite in the mini catalogue. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the silver we've just done or the gold that was already made? And while I angle them and try not to blind you all. I think I'm edging ever so slightly to the gold and I think it's just because of the pattern that was used. What are your bets? Gold or silver? Or both? You're allowed to like both. So if you are watching this and you'd like to see my videos each week, um, I will be going live each Friday now. Today seems like the technology is finally, finally working again for me. So every Friday, 7.30 here on the Hullabaloo page. I also share it into the Crafty Hullabaloo um, Crafty group. So if you aren't part of that, go find me. Um, or if you pop on the Hullabaloo page, it's pinned at the top. So Crafty Hullabaloo is just a group where you can come in and share your crafty makes with everyone. Um, and it's just a fun place to be, to share everything that you make, whether it's stamping up or not. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining me. And if you are new to my page and you are interested in where to buy these, pop over to hullabaloo.com and hit the shop button. Or tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, this video will be made live on YouTube and there will be an accompanying blog post which details everything, including all the measurements for tonight's project. Um, kind of remind me of Malteser boxes. Maybe they'd fit inside. Now there's a challenge. Who can make one fit around a Malteser box? 
Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.